Hi, this is Daniela Cambone and welcome back to StansberryInvestor.com. Last year, when most investors were watching their stocks plummet, one Wall Street legend had an unfair advantage that was identifying winning stocks with massive upside, like Riot Blockchain before it shot up 10,000%, Digital Turbine before it shot up 789% in Overstock before it shot up over 1,000%. This power gauge comes from the legendary Mark Chaikin. And right now you can get a free in-depth look at how his power gauge system works. A way to type in any of the 4,000 different tickers and see exactly where the stock is most likely to go next and in any type of market. Simply go to powergagetrial.com for your free look. Again, that's powergagetrial.com for your free look. All right, let's get to our segment today. Hi, this is Daniela Cambone and welcome back to StansburyInvestor.com. Our Outlook 2022 continues and it wouldn't be a Christmas special without the Grinch that stole it. Please welcome back to the show, Matt McCall, host of Making Money with Matt McCall and my dear colleague here at Stansbury. I, I kid, Matt, I kid. No, I but kid. it's, you know, your followers definitely, they probably... If they called me the Grinch, that'd be a, a very nice thing for them to say about me. So yes, <laughs> I'll take that. You're actually not the Grinch because you actually come bearing optimistic news. I've been having so many pessimistic ones. As you know, I've had Kiyosaki on and uh, Harry Dan all calling uh, for a major economic crash in 2022. But you say not so. Talk to me about this. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I respect for for Robert Kiyosaki, for Harry Dent. I've known him many, many years. You know, great guys, great for the industry. You know what they've done. Uh, I just don't agree with them. And you know, a, a lot of the the bears, uh, such as the two of them, they've been you know kind of screaming from the hilltops the same thing for a decade now. Plus, Harry Dent's been talking about this for literally twenty years, and it just doesn't happen. Um, you know, it, it's it, and again, not to put them down at all. I just view it a little bit differently, where. If you look at the history of the stock market, the history of the economy here in this country, the odds are market's going to be up. The odds are the economy is going to grow. Sure, there's going to be recessions. There'll be bear markets. But I try to play the odds. And the odds are that things will continue to move higher from lower left to upper right. Looking at 2022, you know, it's we, we kind of know that there's going to be at least two or three rate hikes. And that's been a bit of a concern. But that should really tamper down inflation, which has been a concern as well. So both of that those things are really priced into the market and the economy, in my opinion. I think the one thing that that a lot of the bears are overlooking is the fact that um, profits are at an all-time high for corporations, and that will continue next year. Uh, net margins are at an all-time high, meaning companies are making even more off every dollar. So th we're at a really good time right now. And at the end of the day, stock prices are based off how much money they're making. So if we're at an all-time high with corporations making money, it should have the stock market at all time high as well, which we're not far from that. So I don't think that trend ends, Danny, anytime soon. I, I think that will continue. And even though interest rates will go up, they're still historically low. Inflation will come back in check, in my opinion. We're basically fully employed. People who want jobs have jobs. So we're sitting in a really good situation. It's strange. Like I, I just came back home to Pennsylvania, a small town I'm from, and it's kind of that small town mentality. And everybody's really negative here. And, and I throw out all these good things and it's just, they don't want to hear it. So I understand where the negativity comes from, um, but I, I guess logically it doesn't make sense to me. Well, maybe they're looking at the prices of goods, right? Your, your yeah. Gallon of milk and, and whatnot, and they're looking at their paycheck. So, so times are tough right now, but you mentioned inflation. So have, have we reached peak inflation for you then? Is the worst behind us? I think so, because you know a, a large portion of that is going to be uh, energy prices. And I think we, you know, obviously we've seen energy prices come down. The one thing that, that could throw a wrench in that is, you know, at some point in 2022, I think that we finally realized that uh, COVID's not going anywhere. Um, if you look back in 1918, Spanish flu, I've done a lot of research on it. By 1920, Spanish flu was a seasonal flu and still here. I think we're going to see the same thing happen where it's just going to be the seasonal flu. That's going to get people back to work. It's going to get corporations back moving, more people traveling, which could create a big demand for oil and gas. And right now, the producers are their capex spending is at the lowest level since 2005. So that could see a big spike as, as we get back to normal. I, I enjoyed uh, one of the, your recent podcasts, Matt, because I think you, you, you uh, made a really good case. You compared, obviously, the virus, right, the severity of the virus 
um, to 9-11 in the way of how markets reacted to, you know, following the horrific attacks. Anytime there was another scare in the New York subway or, or whatever. Um, and you kind of make the case that that's kind of what's going to keep happening here as we get new variants and whatnot, right? Yeah, you kind of become numb to the news. You know, I remember I was living in New York City at the time, and every time you'd get another news story, people would freak out. And then at some point, two years later, if there was a bombing somewhere, something happening, even if it was something horrific, the markets didn't react the way they did two years prior. So I think you'll see the same thing if another variant comes out a year from now, because you're seeing it, obviously, it's not nearly as deadly or as severe as others, as more people get vaccines. Um, so, you know, I, I think that that it does happen. But I also think it does get better. Um, and that leads to the market reopening. We all know we want to get back to travel. We want to get back to work. We want to get back to normal life. And, you know, that that's going to create more demand for goods, which, you know, keeps inflation you know, higher because you have this demand. But the thing is, the supply chain to me eventually will be fixed. And once that gets fixed, we will see kind of inflation get in check. And I think we did peak out, you know, to answer your original question. Uh, winning sectors then for you, who comes out on top if you are playing the stock uh, market? Uh, two, two areas. One asset class. One asset class is going to be uh, small cap stocks. They have lagged the large guys for several years now. Um, the uh, Russell 2000, which is 2000 small mid cap stocks, actually broke out about six weeks ago. It failed, but I, you know, a lot of things going on in the market. I think that breakout uh, happens once again in the first quarter of next year. And I think you're going to see uh, small caps outperform for the next couple of years. Another sector is biotech. If you go back about 15 years, uh, biotech has bad years every once in a while. The last three times we've had double digit down years, which we're going to have this year for biotech stocks, the average gain in next year is about 35%. And I think we're going to see that next year. Some of these biotech stocks have gotten absolutely crushed. And for me, one of my greatest themes for uh, the Roaring 2020s is uh, healthcare and innovation that we're seeing in healthcare and biotech is leading that. Uh, we, I, we have just such amazing things on the horizon when it comes to healthcare, and these biotech stocks are the ones coming up with innovation. So I, I see some really good opportunity in biotechs going forward. And then, of course, I have to throw in, I'll throw in a, a bonus one here, is uh, cryptos. You know, I think Bitcoin hits triple digits, hits 100 grand at some point in 2022. Um, so I, I think buying down here around 48,000 is, is a great bargain. Again, I always say it could fall to 35 before it goes to 100. I don't know. Uh, but for me, I always keep buying on the dips. And I, and I think that's uh, pretty much a given at some point uh, this year. I'm happy you brought up Bitcoin because I want to wrap with this. Um, I've had technical guys come on lately saying, look, uh, 20,000 Bitcoin is still in the cards. When it gets down there, we can expect to be in those that low area for a good three years before we ha hit a rally again. How, how do you... What do you do when you hear that kind of info, Matt? Like, put yourself in an investor's shoes. Sure. I mean, I, I, you know, had a money management firm for almost 20 years. So I always get those questions from people saying, well, I read this article, Matt, what do we do? And, you know, it's the world of the Internet. So anybody can share their, their thoughts. And, and the thing is, there's going to be as many people on one side as the other. And I like that because that's what makes a market. If, if, if it's a crowded trade, let's say everybody's bullish, it's probably near the top and vice versa. So I'm OK with views. And again, I'm entitled to my view and they're entitled to theirs. But when I hear that, I, I simply look at, at economics 101 and it's supply and demand. There's more people that are buying Bitcoin like myself and holding it. There's more institutions buying and holding it. There's more institutions and corporations opening up to the idea of buying Bitcoin for the first time. There's more retail investors opening up. You know, we've already mined 90% of all Bitcoin. The next 10% will take 100 years. So you have your supply is stagnant, let's call it, while demand will increase over time. You know, it's going to have ups and downs, but it will increase over time, which leads to higher prices. Uh, so for me, I... I could it could it have a crash of 20 grand because of something? Sure. I, it wouldn't surprise me, but I'd be a heck of a buyer down there. But again, I think over time, there, there's there's nothing that can stop this train right now because of simple supply and demand. OK, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, we talked the taper and you said the market's not reacting to it. It's kind of already been baked into the cake here. But with Bitcoin, there isn't really a proven track record. It hasn't really lived through a real taper. This might be the first time, and we don't know how it's going to react there. No, that's a, that's a great point. We don't know how it's going to react. I mean, my inclination is uh, you will see people go into Bitcoin. Um, you know, as, as they start tapering and as interest rates go up, obviously, 
you know, investments that pay uh, dividends and interest become more attractive. So that could take away from something like Bitcoin because that safety has a higher interest rate that it's paying. I, to me, though, interest rates are still so darn low that I don't even they go up 75 basis points next year. It's still historically low that it really shouldn't affect Bitcoin much. I, I want to see Bitcoin start to really uh, differentiate itself from other asset classes. I like to see it trade on its own. Right now, I, I see it trading as a, as a risk on trade. So when the tech stocks do well, it does well. And then we have that risk off trade and people sell stocks, it tends to come down with it. I would like to see it, it, it differentiate itself. And I think over time it will. And you know, the big picture, again, uh, on top of supply and demand is the fact that I don't care if you're a gold bug, uh, a Bitcoin person, whoever you are, you hate stocks, you love stocks. Most of us are pretty infuriated with our governments and with what they're doing in the central bank. So this is just one option to kind of stick it to the man and get away from the governments, something that cannot be really manipulated. And, and again, that's a, just another bonus uh, for it where, you know, tapering interest rates, yeah. they, 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 can, they can do all kinds of stuff. We don't know what they're doing. And let's just uh, end with a gift for our viewers here. Uh, you like the Bitcoin miners, right? You think there's big opportunity yeah, I do. here? Yeah, and, and you know, for I know a lot of a lot of your viewers, Danny, are in gold. To me, it's similar to a gold miner. You know, they're going to be a little more leveraged. But if I'm right and Bitcoin goes to 100 grand, uh, the Bitcoin miners, you know, that's a double, let's say, in Bitcoin. And Bitcoin miners should be four to five x, if not more. Same thing. You'll see it's more leveraged. So uh, they're making money. They have great fundamentals right now. Uh, as long as the price of Bitcoin stays up, if the price of Bitcoin goes down, they get crushed. So you have to uh, agree with me with the price of Bitcoin. But everything from Riot to Marathon, uh, there's a couple um, uh, that we have in our portfolio that are um, uh, exchanges as well. You know, they'll do well. Um, you know, look at Coinbase. You know, I don't have exposure to any of these stocks I just mentioned, but they're all ways to play Bitcoin without actually owning Bitcoin or cryptos. All right. Good thoughts uh, from Matt McCall. Thank you so much. Uh, for joining uh, me. I won't ask you about gold. I'll just send you a few coins for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take them. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. <laughs> no, you will. Uh, Merry Christmas, Matt McCall. I was kidding about the Grinch. You're a great sport. Uh, Merry Christmas. Cool. Thank you. Um, happy holidays to all the folks out there. Thank you so much for watching our Outlook series. We'll have more great guests coming your way, so be sure to stay tuned to StansburyInvestor.com. And don't forget to sign up for premier access to the content at DanielaCombone.com. That's it for me. Thanks for watching.